Hey everybody, it's Kat and Steve with the Positively Midwest Podcast. Before we get started, we're going to help pay some bills. We have hooked up with Anchor.fm to help us keep launching Positively Midwest to as many ears as possible. The more we expand our reach, the more lives we can help inspire. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast, and it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and many, many more. You can make money with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchorapp.fm to get started. Now, sit back and enjoy the next episode of Positively Midwest Podcast. Hey everybody, and welcome to Positively Midwest. I'm Steve Jurens, and with me as always is my wife, Catherine. Hello everybody, hello Mr. Jurens. Hi, we're on episode 49, and it's an exciting episode, and I know I say that every week, but it's because everyone's super exciting. And so we're talking with Ricky Mylon, and he is with the Rhythm Street Movement, and uh, recently he's been, he's a passionate person that likes bringing smiles, and he uh, has bringing been bringing smiles during covid on the street and doing some street dancing and things i think he's a professional dancer too ricky you want to say hi to people hey people how are you (laughs) perfect i wish we lived closer to ricky so we could get in on watching some of the street dancing yeah yeah Yeah. the the street dancing was great but but, you know you don't have to live that close because i think i I think a couple times this summer i went out maybe 200 miles away from minneapolis here to bring the street dancing to people's driveways it was beautiful Ooh, and we got the weather for it recently around here in december 2020 it's been still hitting 40 some degrees so you know people can get these shows brought to them uh our friend cat perkins a mutual friend of ours hooked us up so she's been doing curbside concerts and stuff i just love what you guys are doing yeah well honestly i haven't done like a solo tap dance performance in probably 20 years so when this hit, I also teach tap dance and choreography and things, and I work at different theaters around here. So when it hit, I just, I, I, A, I'm a hyper dude, so I couldn't sit still. And B, I could just feel this weight. And I, the only way that's ever lifted the weight for me, you know, was to tap dance and to, to enjoy music and the creative things. Because I think there was so much language, and there still is, honestly, that I couldn't understand. Or man, you know, I couldn't make my way through. I couldn't navigate a lot of these conversations. But when I'm dancing or working on something creative, it seems like the mind opens and the heart opens. Solutions present themselves to creative. So I, I needed to get to that place, and I put it on Facebook. Hey, anyone give me 25 bucks if I came and danced in your driveway? And it's just it's like, <laughs> all these people sort of messaging me. People I never even knew. They were sending me to other people's houses. And I'm just a man showing up with a board. And, I, you know, you send me a song, and I sat dance in your driveway share some poetic sentiments about music and onward I go and onward you go and hopefully it brings inspiration and energy. It's been a, it was a trip. So then I actually reached out to all my other friends in the Rhythm Street Movement and said, would you like to join me? And we did 50 shows this summer called Revive the Vibe. Wow. Uh, yes, an outdoor expression of, of connection and music and community, which I think was kind of fitting for this time. So give us a little bit of your, your background and uh, how you got started doing what you're doing and why you have this passion in life to, to do what you do. Um, great question. I think I have a passion in life because it, it, gives, it makes me feel like I have a purpose. So I love, I just love getting people up. Maybe I was a little kid, so I was a little kid at the dance studio and I went to the dance studio because I just was doing Michael Jackson dances in my living room. My mom said, we got to get you in dance class. So she put me in dance class and the first year was a little rough because I didn't understand the concept of someone teaching you how to dance or step. I thought you just turned on music and dance. So the first year I was very confused. I was like six years old. But then from there I started understanding the concept of learning and then it became my home away from home and the community and then it became dance competition. So the sport element came into the creative element and I loved that as a preteen and teenager and stuff. And then uh, high school graduation, and I didn't know what to do, so I moved out to New York, started auditioning and failing at every single audition, as the <laughs> story goes. And some friends hit me up, and they said, we're going out to L.A. So I went out to L.A. and started street performing. So my first big break was street performing. <laughs> so uh, it was really fun. And um, then I got gigs, and you know, eventually started getting more gigs, did some theater shows, and 
I went to Tokyo and lived there for a while. I lived in uh, South Carolina doing some theater shows down there. And then moved back here and, and did independent work. And we started our own company called Rhythmic Circus and uh, with my local musician friends. And we toured around the whole world for 10 years doing that project. And now uh, here comes 2020. And there I am dancing in driveways again, a street performer, <laughs> a little bucky, and a uh, heart full of joy, just make, trying to make sense of the mystery of life. And uh, the best way I can do it and get out of myself is to perform for others and share the sense of it. It's been a profound and beautiful year for me, so I'm thankful to be here. Yeah, and in a weird way, it's kind of, for some, especially if you try to focus on the positive, it's really almost brought us back down you know, a level to appreciate uh, some of the things that have we've forgotten about, you know, in our busy, busy day to day world and going out and about and thinking we have all these things to do. It's kind of slowed us down and brought us back down to earth a little. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's 100 percent made us address our on a very personal level, our values. I think, And I think that that's always a beautiful and important conversation to have with yourself. You know, sometimes you get caught up in the speed of things or the stuff of stuff when it kind of takes you away from you. And the one thing that you can't get away from is you. So why not get closer to, because then you want closeness, you long for closeness and that's going to make you feel connected, you know, truly connected, not just synthetically. So I think getting in tune with your values, and the things that truly move you are, this is 20, you know, COVID, everything has really done that to a lot of people, which has established a greater gap than all of us. Which, and that's so beautiful. The depth brings, the deeper you dig, the more true light you get, you know? So I think it's been beautiful. Yeah, that's one thing we talk about often is, you know, you can't just run around and change other people, especially when you have a passion like we do to try to help others and inspire others. You have to remember so often that, you know, you just have to be part of the change and change yourself and always put that out there. And I think eventually it does come back to you, but you're also kind of a beacon of, you know, that, that happiness or positivity, uh, in your surroundings that way then. Yeah. You live in your own, yeah, they talk about the bubble. I mean, <laughs> I think your whole life is in a bubble is like an ecosystem of energy. And so the energy karma helps you talk about it. Like you sort of become you, you're creating you at all times. Like my buddy, Richard, I was talking about you are creating now and like you're sort of your energy, your, your you know, your perception of the world around you. If you're gonna like buy into a tremendous amount of fear, anxiety, these things, you have to like let go of those things, and you have to kind of find find you. You got to get to you because once your light shining, your creative energy shining, you're in tune with the people. Like your vibe captures the world you live in, and you become that great version of yourself. Because everybody has sort of a duality where they're lost. Because we're all lost. And they're frustrated, and we're all frustrated. But then, you know, for me, it's always been dance, or expression of music, and then creative work with um, videos and different things. I've, I've worked in a lot of different hats. I do directing shows and such. But yeah, when I, when I find my hat, it's never my hat; it's our hat. And I think that's kind of a a thing. Like, oh, I found my hat; it's our hat. But it has to be mine to be ours. You know, like you have to. I don't know. When you're serving, when you're truly serving, you find yourself your room of this kind of syncs up naturally. So you kind of, I don't know, there's a mystery to that. I yeah, love it. Yeah, I really appreciate what you said there because it. what I started to realize is that when um, we've done a lot of these interviews and what people uh, will commonly say is that um, you serve the people around you and what have you done to give back or what have you done like to be the good in the world or to try to help others, um, teach others, you know, quite a few different contexts of it. But when it really boils down, it's what have you done that for other people? Um, and so you kind of, you know, resonated with some of that just now with me. So, um, but that's a common theme I think we see. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is a trip that this, I started on this in August. I feel like I spent so much time as a performer and a creative person, director, like, I don't know, in my life in general, too, I think, I think oftentimes in my own psyche, in my own mind, like trying to do things where I, I would want them to like me or like my show or like my song. And then, I, like, I came to a point where I was like, no, oh, I want them to walk away from my music or from my show or from my whatever, liking themselves more. Like, I want people to feel empowered. I want them to feel like me when I'm walking into the show and I'm nervous and I'm excited and I'm, 
pumped up and I'm terrified and I, all these emotions are swirled up and I feel so purposeful and I feel, feel so present. You know, I want them to walk out feeling that way about their next stage of their next expression. Like they're about to go make a profound difference. And even if it's for your own pixel, like you said, every pixel changes and the TV changes. So I think uh, the biggest changes happen deep. And then when they happen deep enough, they profoundly change the pixels next to them because it's irresistible. It's true. It's beautiful, you know? <laughs> that was an amazing way to put that. Um, kind of left me a little speechless almost. <laughs> and that doesn't happen often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell me a little more. Uh, I wrote this down as you were talking earlier, and you mentioned uh, failing um, a lot of auditions and like maybe touch on um, that with some of how that that feeling was and how you kept motivated through that. Maybe for someone that's interested in following a similar path um, in that kind of industry. Also, when you mentioned you went to L.A., you know, coming from this area, that must have been uh, kind of a shock at times, too. Can you touch on those couple of things? Yeah. Uh, I went to New York first, did all those auditions. They never chose me. I made it uh, Saturday Night Fever, I think was the show. And I made it to the callbacks of that. But other than that, I would just go to auditions three, four a week and just get told no. And then I went to Los Angeles and street performed at the gig. And then I did some auditions probably once a week, maybe two. And they would just say, no, I never got any jobs. And, uh, yeah, I think I, I think then I was done with the dance industry, quote unquote industry. And I was done with the entertainment, quote unquote industry as well. And I was so perplexed and I was so frustrated with God because I was like, I know that there is this sentiment inside of me. There's this particular brand of energy that makes me feel further and whole. And it makes me, I really understand, like, I see a, a purpose for myself in this hat, in this role, in the, in the community. If the world makes sense to me here, and I know the language. But when I'm outside of that, I don't. But then when I go to try to find my work in this industry, when I go to try to make a living doing it, it seems like there's an absolutely no place for someone like me. The shape of me, the way I perceive dance, m my sort of creative perception of what dance is and how it generates energy in the community and so i was really done with it i was and then it made me and when i was done with dance which was my bridge to all things you know i was sort of done with people and i went to a very dark spot for a while and uh what brought me out of there was my musical friends musicians in my life and their their sense of humor their sense of um fear the way that they were afraid to, and just like me they were insecure when they expressed their song what people would think. They wanted people to love them, but they weren't sure. And it made me feel like very in tune with them. And then I was still me. I was just in Minnesota now and I was older and I was no longer a part of the competitive scene or the, I didn't have a job. And so I felt like this was a great place to create dance from. It was a new way of creating dance. And so I was finally free of the burden of what I was thought it was supposed to be. So it was one of the most liberating times. So now I could just dance on myself. And that was the most pure way to be. And so from that time, I'm 23 or 25, I took tons of notebooks. And I would write about my, write about my, about God, I would about politics. Write about That's the one draw upon time because I'm, they're writing me either. When I have to, what a world because that's where I'm getting Ooh, singing, you. you know my yeah you cut out a bit on so, us there for a minute <laughs> oh no I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no I'm not sure not sure what happened we just all of a sudden it started cutting out like we were losing you well it was cell phone stuff but do you remember where about where it started no Okay. <laughs> it's the last was like it's like he could start to dance his heart out. You yeah, know, it then, was like he finally was getting back to what was like bringing him joy out of the dance versus the competition of the dance. Yeah, and then were you talking about do you journal or something like that? Yeah, that's where it started to yeah, cut out I would a little. Journal constantly. Yeah, so I would journal constantly in 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 that time, and then note that like the journaling I did, all of the writing I did sort of shaped my 
voice in the world, if you will, as a writer. And I draw upon it always as I'm doing directing now, as I'm doing choreography now. It's sort of that time created the foundation for the substructure for the choreographer I am today, the director I am, the writer I am, the show producer, team leader, anything I'm working on, you know, that the roots of it are in those years. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was a lost young 20 something that was probably drinking too much, just hanging out with musicians when I didn't see myself as a musician at the time and really was just, you know, searching for anything, anything. I was just in a state of complete, I don't want to, I'm, I'm disgusted by the industry I was trying to work in. And so it didn't, it didn't dawn on me until years and I'm still, it's honestly dawning on me as I say this out loud. But that time was insanely profound for my ability to be good at my job. I just didn't know what I was doing at the time. It helped to Pretty shape cool. you. Yeah, it definitely, it's like your your journeys that we take and some of those hard times that we go through are what is meant to be, to help create our true destiny. You know, otherwise you don't find yourself necessarily unless you've gone through some of those harder times that have tested your spirit. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you can't see it when you're in it because you're in a hole. You know, when you're down in a hole, you can't see what's going on. But when you climb out of it, you suddenly get out of there and you're like, wow, look at all these muscles I got. How did I get all these muscles? Oh, I became so strong from climbing. Well, thank God for that hole because I wouldn't have climbed if I was sitting on top. You know? Exactly. So, it's, it's like, yeah. Then you're, then you're all excited. You're like, wow, I got muscles. I can climb. I feel on top. I'm invincible. Let's do stuff. <laughs> and then you're motivated. And nothing, nothing is crazy like motivation. When you're genuinely motivated, that is just a that's a feeling, you know? Yeah, it's kind of, you know, that purposeful fulfillment. You know, once you get a taste of that, it's just, you know, you set your sights on it and you can't stop going after it. And you do, you know, you almost have to fail. And we did an episode a couple few weeks ago with uh, the Teachable Soul podcast is what they were called. And they she called it that because she wanted them not to be called failures, but they're all teachable moments. And as long as we learn from those and then the apply the action, you know, it like you can achieve absolutely anything that you put your mind to. Uh, but, you know, you got to have a little bit of that uh, failure slash teachable moment to have gratitude for where you're at now. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. I have a. I, I teach kids. Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you. So now, like, when you started dance at six, you know, were you in like an all boys class or you in a mix or was it like predominantly girls back then when you started? Predominantly girls. Our, our daughters take dance. And so our oldest, this is her ninth year of dance. She's a seventh grader. So they started when they were about four and it's like, they only have girls in any of their classes. But I do have a friend that her son now has started dance with a different program and he's loving it. And they have a little bit more of that mixture of that male in there. So what was that like? being with predominantly girls in your class back then? It was like the only thing I knew, so it didn't seem that abnormal to me. There was a lot of boys at the studio. That's that. I was really, really lucky in that. There was a studio I went to, it was called Martin Dance Studio. I mean, that time for me, back in the day, there was a ton of boys that danced. I have no idea why. It was just like this perfect moment in time. There was older boys that danced that I saw, so I didn't feel like I was the only boy even though they weren't in my class, they were older. But it was really helpful to have them and look up to them, um, looking back. And um, that is a, it is a challenge, the dance world. That the, it's, it's, to me, it's very sad because dance is such a great way to express yourself, such a pure way to express yourself. It's such a timeless way, you know? It's timeless. Um, 200, 500, 7,000, anytime there's been humans, I guarantee you that they could express themselves in a beautiful way through dance. So... Um, I don't know. For me, it's the top of values. Music and dancing are such a huge thing. But yeah, I hope more boys always start dancing. For me, for me, it became natural after the second year, and that just was my life. That's where I would go, and it wasn't a big deal about the boys and the girls thing. And I, it was pretty, you know, there was no Instagram and stuff when I was growing up, so there was no bullying. And, you know, the bullies, the bullies were from like the hockey team at school, and I knew I got to go to dance after school, so I wasn't too concerned about their opinion. <laughs> right and then now you teach you said so you teach youth yeah now i teach at six studios here in the metro and i teach around the country 
and I'm actually the director of Adrenaline Dance, which is a convention that tours the coast of the country. So I do a lot of different things in the dance world now, which is super fun. I was in the dance world when I was 23 years old. And I think that's a really interesting circle that my journey's taken me on. But uh, yeah, I always speak to the kids about filling your backpack with lessons and removing all the excuses from your backpack. Because I think when something challenging happens to you, it's so easy to say that I'm a victim of this situation and I can't do anything. But if you learn from that experience, if you're willing to have flexibility not only in your body, but in your perspective, so you can see through many different people's perspectives, then you always are using that flexibility to be a creative person. And that, in turn, creates solutions, you know, so you can find solutions for many challenges when you're willing to be flexible in your perspective and see from other people, you know, practice empathy and really understand people's challenges. It gives you the capacity to, to be a, a great creative force. And, but that requires practice. You have to stay flexible in your perspective so you can always be growing, you know. So uh, when you were, since we're in the Midwest area, one of the um, things I've kind of wanted to tackle is some of the old traditional, you know, male, that chauvinistic or, you know, th- when you don't understand something, sometimes you just kind of attack it. But you didn't really have to deal too much with uh um, the traditional bullying because you were a male in dance or anything. Um, and what you touched on too was that social media, you know, now makes it a lot tougher for people. Do you now feel, um, this is something we touched on with Cat Perkins too, do you now deal with any kind of social media um, keyboard warriors or anything like that when you <laughs> when you do, are on social media? No, man. I, yeah, I think... <laughs> I don't, I can't, I can't even, I can't, I, I, I don't even know how to go on about that, even talking about that, because I can't even go on about that, talking about that online or nothing. Like, I have so many beautiful dreams I'm trying to work on. I see so many beautiful um, people in my life, it's really, truly amazing, talented people, and I see so many hurt and sad people all around on social media, you know, I, I don't want to engage in I don't want to engage my frustration or my anger or any of that kind of energy in something negative because that energy is a very dark energy and if you put it in the wrong place, it also has great value though because it can, it can generate energy, it can generate noise. So if you can focus that kind of energy on something positive, you say, well, this is my to-do list this week. This is the project we're working on. This is the message of the project. This is the message of my life. This is the message of me. Well, let's get take that energy that's frustrating me right now and let's focus into this. And let's turn all of that negative energy, let's put it down in the dirt and go through that roots and up to the leaves with those that sun can make us grow. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to give people my energy when it's going to be combative like that over things that really aren't relevant to the change we're trying to make in the world anyway. So I try to stay away from that. And I think uh, as a younger man, if I could teach myself anything, that's what I would tell, you know, don't, don't let that anger dictate any, you're, you're letting too much of that anger to pretend like it's real. It ain't real, you know? So yeah, I was, I think I was for sure, uh, confused. And when I was disgusted by the dance industry as a whole, you know, there was, when, when I was trying to gig and taking class in LA, especially in New York as well, though, like I was one of the only heterosexual members of the dance community. So there was a tremendous amount of pressure to join the gay community and their practices and their uh, lifestyle and everything else. And I wasn't necessarily into that vibe. And in high school, there was definitely a bullying that I was homosexual and they would, you know, push me and, and uh, bully me. And I wasn't into that vibe, but I, I knew I got to go to dance. You know, and when the music was on, when we were working on the training and when there was choreography in the room, there was a message to this song and the song was being expressed through this movement or, or if it was tap dance, you know, there was music in the room and there was every single, there was a lesson to be learned that day and there was some really cool choreography that was, was developing every day, just like today. So I, I always wanted to just get to the studio and escape, you know, and I think eventually more people wanted to get on my wavelength profoundly enough. Whereas now we get to create shows and things. So I'm a really, really lucky and blessed guy. And in a sense, so by sticking to your mindset of staying positive, not surrounding yourself with the negativity, not uh, participating in it, 
uh, being more the change and the lighter side of what we all need. Really, you just gave an, an example too of then how your surroundings started to change and the people started to conform or in a sense be want to be more happy like you are. Why Why is this guy happy and why doesn't it bother him? And uh, Right. Yeah, you what became is he part of the solution. Right now? You know, what's he working on? I want to work on that. And then suddenly I became part of teams and stuff. What's he working on? Why is he so positive? <laughs> I just trained myself. I call it perspective tailoring. You know, I can't let that roadblock dictate my outfit. Yeah, I can just change the outfit. You know, change, make, find the way to change your perspective to see that as something that's contributing creativity to your journey. You know, like this is adding dimension to my journey. This is adding dimension to my perspective. Now, don't be frustrated and react to it, Ricky. This is going to give you some really dynamite lessons down the road here. Just take note. You know, take note of this. This is beautiful. And if someone's having a challenge with me, this is great. Like, how can I reach out to them in a positive way to help them guide me to help develop me? Like, take the time to cut out for people that are frustrated with you. And sometimes there's people where you have to cut. You have to just say, this relationship isn't working. You know, I always say I value relationship top. Whatever the gig is, whatever we're working on, whatever my, you know, I value our relationship first. If you're, if our relationship is a priority, we can navigate whatever challenge it is. And we, if we have positive boundaries, if we can really work together in a beautiful way, then we can overcome any any of, any of these challenges. But the, the relationship has to be first. And sometimes the give and take isn't even in a relationship. And you have to openly say, you know, maybe we part ways like a, the branches of a tree right now because we're reaching for quite differently. That's not a negative. That's going to help the tree in the end. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to find growth in your life. I think always reaching up, always trying to find um, a new way to get to your light and to, the, to help share that light with the people around you. For yep. sure is, has been the difference for me. Yeah, that's one thing I've always been curious about is why people, uh, why us as human beings want to hold on to something you know, whether it's an old older friend, they've been your friend for a while, and you start to move in a different direction, and they're not coming along, or they're going in an opposite direction, but you don't want to break it off, you know, or um, I guess even in a relationship, you know, if you let it continue on to the point where you're making bad decisions, that could really hurt your partner, or they are, or whatever. You know, it's interesting how um, people don't focus on what's the healthiest, not only for me, uh, mentally and physically, but what's healthy for uh, this friend or this partner or this business, you know, whatever the context is, you know, we're so kind of afraid to to step back and and think about it and then try to positively break it off if you have to or, um, you know, just move forward in that, in that growth. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the yeah. psychology is behind it other than, trying to always be positive and doing what's best for you, that helps, but... I think you just got to be so thankful for them. Mm-hmm. And I think once you can just be genuinely, you know, genuinely, it takes a little bit of meditation, you know, you got to get your brain in the right spot. But if you can really start to see why you're thankful for this person, then you sort of can allow them, you can allow them to be totally different or to have, you know, you just have to be thankful for their great uniqueness, their, their own difference that you're the challenges you're having right now and when you can allow you can't necessarily allow that thing to break off until you really say thank you and when you say thank you then you, you can watch them walk on a different path and watch yourself go the other direction you know it, it requires great gratitude and true gratitude to just uh to allow that separation from all any relationship but you know the relationship is infinite so i, I really believe that I, when you have a relationship someone there's someone there's a unique light between you two just like us right now, even though I barely know you, we're on the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a unique and special time in, in, in time that it, that relationship holds. So I think it's always going to be there. So just cherish the relationship and honor the relationship. And uh, if you do, if you're willing to do that and set that standard, other people around you will start setting that standard too. And it takes the work internally first, though. Yeah, we. That's great. We talk about uh, when you said true gratitude, we kind of talked about that in the last episode a little bit. We just wanted to do a quick thank you episode to everybody that has been following us for the last 11 months and listening. But uh, we said we talk about gratitude a lot on our page and um, on our podcasts. But 
when we're talking true gratitude, you know, everybody says a good example is I'm grateful for my kids or I'm grateful for my parents or my wife or spouse. And you're like, yeah, well, duh. I mean, everybody is. So let's get real. Like, oh, I'm thankful for my kids. Well, what about it? Like, like sit down and close your eyes and truly think about an example of a day, of a memory, uh, just today, whatever, of replay that memory and feel that feeling and and then put it out into the world that saying it out loud, I'm grateful for my children because I remember one time they come running down the steps from Christmas and they couldn't wait to open presents. We all sat around in the middle in our pajamas and taking pictures and laughing. It was a great time. And then we had dinner. You know, I mean, obviously I could have been more descriptive there, but that's to me like on a path of trying finding true gratitude. And I, th- I think that's what you're touching on. Um, when I feel the passion in your voice. Man, I think that's beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yes. <laughs> well, when you went with the, the light and that we're connected, even like now, like I'm sitting here kind of nodding like, yeah, I feel that way with all the guests we've had and, and then the way that, you know, cats help hook, hook, hook us up with a couple people. You especially, like there's a reason um, and I said that before we started recording, like there's a reason that the universe keeps putting these people in our path and uh, we snake one or two more listens, you know, each week or here and there. And uh, I mean, there's got to be. You're going to keep finding people. You're going to keep finding. Want to know why? Because what's your, what's your topic of this podcast? Positive Posit- energy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You, know, you can positively attract positive people for the rest of your positive, you know, as long as. It's the rarest thing in earth, you know. People, people want money. People want attention. Uh, if you are, if you're full of true, if you do the work to be truly grateful, like you were just talking about, really do the work to be to find gratitude in your heart, then you're gonna. It's all gonna be there. You'll see it. It's gonna be right there for you, and it'll just present itself time and time again. And uh, it's not. It's never gonna be too much, and it's never gonna be too little. And it's going to be right there, and it's just going to keep showing up. And that's the magic of optimism and, and truly positive thinking, in my opinion. Because, yeah, when I was in the dark places a couple different times, I was like, no, nah, this ain't me. I have to have a positive outlook. And as soon as you get lit, it's, you know what I've been using lately? Because I've been promoting this holiday show. It's kind of like the lights on the tree. One goes out, it's so hard to figure out what, how to get the lights back on. But when they're all connected, boom, they're all on. It's all about connection, and it's about staying lit. And when we're all connected, we're all lit. <laughs> yeah, so. I love it. That was awesome. Um, yeah. What's so? What's like your routine? Like, do you you still journal then now? I don't. I don't journal. It's it's and it frustrates me to know him because I don't have the time. I have two children. Mm-hmm. Um, I got an amazing wife. Shout out to my beautiful wife, Brittany. Um, and I don't, I have 18 hats. I wear a lot of hats because I'm trying to make a positive difference and do as much as I can. And carving that schedule out daily and being really honest with myself, and like being able to step back from certain hats and trying to cultivate relationships with studios and their students and choreography. And, um, I don't, because I'm taking notes, like I said, those notes from 23 to 26, 27, 30 years old have, have become sort of the notes I took just on life and now I use them all on the projects and the projects you know it requires note taking so I take notes on whatever the development is we're working on a creative piece for a competition a show like we're working on the holiday show right now and whatever the project is I'm working on that becomes my notes so the notes of my life go into my work my life is all into the creative work I'm doing every day and I'm always working with creative people every day so the project becomes my notes to the world you know Beautiful. So, how yeah. um, do you do you exercise? Is that part of like a, a program of yours? I'm always curious sometimes when it comes to performers or musicians, um, especially someone in your industry. Uh, do you like do yoga? Do you have any kind of uh, um, when? How do you get jacked up in the morning and ready to go? I go to yoga 
and I have missed yoga. I go to yoga. I escape to yoga because I go to. I try to catch a yoga class. I used to go to Core Power Yoga, and my wife introduced me to it probably twelve years ago. And I never was a yoga person, and I went and I was hooked. And the fact that they have multiple locations and their schedule is online, I was able to sneak away to a different studio. I didn't want to be a part of a yoga community or anything like this. I just wanted to sneak in there and do this practice with these strangers and then sneak out of there. And it was this great place where my mind and my body could all get in tune to a room and be guided by someone else. And I wasn't in charge. I would just breathe. It's a physical, mental practice to be guided through this, this beautiful sweat. It was great. And I've missed it so much since COVID. So, so much. I, I try to do home yoga not the same as being guided by someone else in this space you know but yes i love love yoga and now i just kind of stretch i've been going for lots of walks and obviously i tap dance a lot so that's physical but uh yeah everyone has to find their way i'm sure i legitimately since covid i've been trying to figure out my new physical practice to my new normal if you will to to get that yoga back into my life in a really sustainable way that's my journey right now I am. I love yoga. And uh, when everything started in our gym around here had shut down that I couldn't go to in-person yoga. Any, well, I guess it was, couldn't go to the gym for yoga anymore. I switched and I started like following the YouTube practices. And even that is so much better than just trying to do it on my own too. It's just like, because they hold you more accountable. Even though I know that Adrienne can't see me through that TV, I feel like she's holding me more accountable to like, give it my all and for the length of time that she's always telling me instead of just wanting to give up. Right. She becomes your accountability buddy. Yeah. In a sense, even though she has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That's maybe I need someone else to hold me to it. But, for, <laughs> but like, like the part that was so beautiful for me was sort of this liberating nature where I could pick which class I was going to go to at which studio. And it sort of was like this, this escape to yoga. And I really liked that where I wasn't part of this studio or it wasn't a big, you know, I don't go to this person's class every time. <laughs> thing that I would do in the morning. Oh, today I'm going to go over to Grand. Today I'm going to go over to, I'm gonna go, you know, and it was, so I just missed that. But yeah. Well, it sounds like um, even when you talk just a little bit about your family, um, you kind of light up in, in your tone a little and so having a couple of kids and a wife and wearing um, 18 hats, I think is what you said. How do you, um, when do you know it's time to pump your, pump your brakes and, and chill out and, and touch, touch back down to earth and hang out with the kiddos or take the wife somewhere? Do you do date nights? Uh, do you have any, any um, talk on that? Yeah, well, we've just reprioritized walking. Mm -hmm. So taking walks, making time to take walks. Um, it's not just about making time to have a meal together because if you just sit down and eat, it's like, I don't know, the energy is different when you're on a walk, you're, you're physical, you're in step, you're in stride with each other physically and you're moving, your lungs are going, your brain's moving, your eyes are moving, seeing these things. So we want to get back to doing walks because we feel more creative in our conversations. And uh, so, yeah, but we're always, I mean, we're always flowing. We're always trying to flow. So, like, what's the next? How is that developed? You know, she's a creative person, too. She owns a dance studio. And we're always, like like you two, we're, we're always trying to flow and find the next thing. And then now with the boys, you know, we got an eight-month-old and a four-year-old. So we're trying to, like, psychology. We're pretending we're psychologists now, like children psychologists. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but maybe what he's, you know, maybe, well, maybe what he's trying to say is maybe why he's doing that. And then it's back to the practice of it and, that's just like, I'm sure all parents go through, like you could search online and read 17 books, but it's just finding yourself and each other and being the leaders you need to for this little kid. And yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's a family. I think one thing that, one thing that yeah, there's stress, there's stress about having a family, there's stress about having 18 hats, but the, all of that should, if you're doing it right, should really inspire you about how lucky you are to be a part of it. You know, it's like, Whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, this is a challenging day, but like, this is how cool it is. We have this four year old who's throwing a tantrum. <laughs> you know? What are, what are his parents? Like, how amazing is this? Okay, yeah, let's figure it out. Yeah, okay. But you know what I mean? It's really, it's really cool to be 
to be a dad and to be a husband. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm that, thankful. That's a great way to put it because I think a lot of people, you know, or you witness other people sometimes that um, there's a there's an ignorance to the responsibility that they've been given, um, the privilege, if you will, of being a parent. You know, you're responsible for um, potentially the future of how this human being will interact and and act in society and uh you know we always get critical of ourselves and you know we've all beat each other up over and over 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 the years and our kids are 13 and 11 now and uh you know like the set of problems we have now are you know their brains work differently so they they can debate us and they can argue or they can come up with a good point and you have to concede because i think even though we're a parent as an adult you have to go, you know what? Okay, you were right. So let's talk this out. But uh, I just, it made me think of all these different thoughts when you started saying it that way. Because uh, it's such a, it's it's a unique, intimate relationship that what you have with your children. Like you have to understand, you know, what's in front of you. It's such a gift. Yeah. I was, I couldn't even, yeah, gratitude. And I had a lady once tell me, you know, like my kids were throwing a temper tantrum. They were being loud. I don't know if we were at church or if we're out in public. And, you know, she's like, you know, it's okay. Like sometimes it doesn't, you know, maybe go as smooth as what you want. But remember to count your blessings. Because even in that moment of tantrum or when you're wanting them to be quiet, you know, you are so blessed that they are able to make those noise, that you're able to have this time with them. You know, not everyone has been given that gift. And she's like, so it's okay. And you have to learn to appreciate it even at those moments. Right. Yeah, it's like, wow. It's like, look at this person. <laughs> if you could just get that, you got to get out of that one moment to take one little step back and when you can, it's like, wow. Because then, like, you realize you're you. And sometimes you're, like, in the moment so hard that you can be reactive. I can be reactive for sure. I'd be like, why? Stop! Why are you? Why? No! Don't throw that at the why? No! no. And then I'd be, I'd be like, step back. And he'd be like, wow. And then it. And then like, I feel like this is true for sure as a parent. Like if you can calm yourself, they'll follow. But you really have to not jump on their energy. You have to like, like get outside of that energy and be creative and, and with your energy in this moment. And then, then you can find the solution. It's not like anything though creative with your perspective don't get too don't get too locked into it and then you can be creative and breathe and yeah it's beautiful <laughs> i mean I, 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 you guys are parents like you're looking at this amazing beautiful little person i just get perplexed every time i'm like how am i how did i on this journey in my life how did i get to be your dad me <laughs> like what <laughs> yeah. I, it's a miracle. I know. I like. I really appreciate the, you know, the beginning stages. And gosh, I wish they didn't grow up so fast and so on. But I'm kind of a big picture guy too. And I won't lie. There's times where I wish I could just blink ahead into the future and see them when they're 20 years old or when they're 30 years old. And just like you want that sense of accomplishment, like all that shit that I went through mm -hmm. and all the stuff I put them through, and vice versa. Man, look at at thirty years old, they're doing this with their life, and it's like, oh, man, okay, it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, too much. Yeah. <sighs> well, that was yeah, beautiful. That's the biggest challenge. That's the biggest challenge. I think you got to believe. You got to just keep the faith. You know, I was in a dressing room in South Carolina in this theater show I was in. There's this woman, Miss Kathleen. And she was a real Southern woman, and she had her sewing. She would fix the costumes and she had this little curtain. She would sit in this little room and said, we're going to be complaining about something. I was 21 years old. And she opened the curtain. She goes, you know what, Ricky? If you keep one foot in tomorrow and one foot in yesterday, you're going to shit on today. <laughs> but she, it was the greatest thing when she said that to me because I've kept it with me ever since. And I just leave that. I'm like, well, you keep one foot in tomorrow. So, I love that. So let's just yeah. keep moving forward instead of letting that one foot drag behind you. Yeah, and I don't love just yep. the phrase, but I love how you said it too. <laughs> <laughs> he embodied her. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Uh, so a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a mutual friend of ours, Kat Perkins, um, hooked us up with you and, uh, I praise the Lord that she did, which brings me to a beautiful segue. And then at the end of this, we'll also enter what I love to call the, the shameless plug zone. Um, but is this, how did you meet Kat Perkins is what we're about to talk to how you met her or, um, you guys just homies or what's up with that? My life is like a shameless plug at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't jump in deep to this holiday show virtual setting. I know Kat, I guess I met Kat in the lobby at the AIM Center probably like 10 years ago oh. at a rhythmic circus show. And then flash forward to the Humbug show. And I had this idea, this, the Humbug show started 2018. And I had this idea to just do a run view I had been touring, doing all this stuff. I want to just do a run. I want to set up here, and I want a special guest every night. Different special guest artist. And so I'm writing down different friends and folks I know that I would love to have a special guest artist. And, uh, you know, then you kind of put it, you know, you're, you're high, high on your list. Like, these people that I probably wouldn't, but I'm going to throw them on the list anyway. And of course, Pat's up there. And then I reach out to somebody. I get her number. I reach out to Kat. I don't know how she's going to operate. I don't know her personally very well at all at this point and I reached out to her and she's like yep I'm in and I was like wait what <laughs> she's like yeah I'd love to let's do it I'm like what uh, okay so then she came it was a Friday night she came and absolutely just lit the place on fire as she does and then I started following her on social media and I started realizing how much you know how much else she does other than just music she's just such a positive uh, connective person and just uh, being a fan of her is just how she speaks and so then I wrote this song last year um, about life called Footprints in the Snow um, and I I created the song didn't know who was singing it or what was going to happen with the song it was one of the most meaningful songs I've ever written about life and uh, every you know one of those rich songs and through COVID time I was thinking about it and I just reached out to her and I said would you work on this song and she's so pro with this she's like yeah and then she gets back and like, she's like yeah totally I'm like okay loves the lyrics talks to me richly about the lyrics Con converses with musical director David Feely she comes back with like notes so specific and just super pro so then we go get the studio you know we have to stay social distance to record it and she comes in. I'm not even able to see her through the glass. The way we have the studio set up, I can't see her from where I'm sitting. She's performing this song. It's as though it was just magic. I, she's so pro. She knows the song. She knows the sentiment of the song. She knows what it means to her. It's just, she's, she was amazing to work with on the recording of this track. And uh, she's going to perform the song live in the show on Saturday night as we do this live cast version of it. And, uh, yeah. It's it's a dream. No one, no one, someone out there is doing the work how she does it. It makes you so inspired to want to continue being a creative person when the reality of uh, you know bills and being a, a dad and everything else sometimes says maybe you should stop doing all this creative work. It's more like long where you can just have a normal career. But man, she's inspiring, and she the way she did this song, and I'm like, you work with people like this all the time. Like, you just made my life come to life. <laughs> so I couldn't say enough positive things about her, you know, and, and she's so forthright and honest with how she works about it too. She talks about the, you know, the science of music. She knows where she is, like tempo. She knows where she is key. She knows what sort of harmony she wants to work with, you know, but at the same time, she's talking very fluidly about the spirit of music and she knows what the sentiment is and how she wants it to feel. And, you know, so she's really able to go back and forth in that conversation so fluidly and naturally. So working with her is just, yeah. I mean, she's a spectacular person. Yeah, she's a gem. I couldn't believe it. I just ran into her over here in Watertown, South Dakota. She was grabbing a bite to eat after doing a motivational speaking engagement. And I went to go talk to them about radio advertising and couldn't find the manager. And here she was sitting in the in the bar, whatever, restaurant side, having some food. And he's like, hey, this is Kat Perkins. And I'm like, what? And then... The rest is history. <laughs> right? She just flows. She's got a flow. She's got a flow. She's been, I mean, she 
she's been doing it. She knows so many different people. She's worked with so much, and she's got the flow. She's got the positive gene, though. Mm-hmm. You know, she stays positive. She stays up. She stays optimistic. So that's one of the things. You know, like you're drawn to other people that have that positive gene that want to see the positive in this situation and make something cool of it. And she's just got that. And she's like, cool. Well, then, and then it makes you intrigued. You know, when you're staying positive, kind of you want a little bit. You want to know about that because mm-hmm. you're not curious about the drama. I think so many people are spending their time curious about the drama. They want to hear the dirt and they want to do the gossip. So now they're generating all this energy there. But let me hear about the idea. Tell me about your idea. And now you're into into the idea and you're into the, you know what I mean? Now you're drawn into something that's going to be more productive, something that's going to be more positive. You want to hear about the idea of something that's beautiful. You're not drawn into the gossip about what's the negative. You know? Yeah. And I think people, you know, if we do it the right way, I think people like to see success too. You know, especially if they can see it in themselves and it comes from a story of, yep, here's some hard knocks. Uh, here's some experiences. I've had to go ups and downs and and uh, I've got success now. And, you know, when we listen to her story and, you know, your story, too, there's so much inspiration in, in every human being. If we would just take time to listen to each other and connect and maybe that's something COVID's helped some people do. You know, we've had to do it virtually, but there's a positive side of technology. You know, we can connect over 400 miles away right now and record something beautiful like this. And, you know, there's just, it's all in what you do with what's in front of you, you know, to, to find or be the inspiration. Yep. So I want to play this little audio sample that I have, and then I want you to tell us just how amazing this is going to be. Are you cool with that? Okay, here, here we go. And this is you on this audio, right? That's right it is. Ooh, all right, here we go. The theaters are closed, but we're still here, still bringing the cheer, and still celebrating our favorite time of the year. Who brought the humbug? The show that exploded on the Minneapolis theater scene in 2018 and 2019 is back for 2020, and this time, we're online. A virtual holiday show imagined, created, and produced by local artists that want to stuff your stockings with the rhythm of joy. No commercials, no politics, zero calories. Who brought the humbug? A funky sleigh ride like no other. Tickets are on sale now. Tickets.humbug.show. Woo! Hot <laughs> down! Let's go! <laughs> Ooh, man, I want to see it in person. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so it's a theater hit. The theater is... The magic of life, okay. Uh, you can't write a great story until you lived enough, so I had to live enough. And I had to learn enough about dance. I had to learn enough about theater. I had to learn enough about music. And uh, so the, the story takes place at an ugly sweater party, and we're rocking out. You know, it's the craziest, most funnest, most wild ADD adrenaline party ever. And uh, Santa Claus is rapping to Rudolph about, please guide my sleigh. You could be the MVP with that LED. And uh, <laughs> LED knows, you get it. There's yeah. all sorts of fun, crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, Frosty's feet become magical tap shoes, and he starts tapping, and it's all going to, like, ska music at, like, 190 BPM. So it's just adrenaline crazy, wonderful good time. Everyone's being crazy cheerful. And boom, somebody shows up and says, you guys got to shut this party down. We're like, shut the party down. We're having the greatest party ever. What do you mean? And they're like, you got to shut it down because there's some evidence that there's a humbug at this party. And we're like, there's not a humbug. What, are you kidding me? A humbug at this party? And then there thus starts to show that the investigators are trying to find the humbug at the party. And we're trying to prove that there's not a humbug at the party. And that takes us on a pretty hysterical mystery journey through each character at the party and then also each character's specific talent and their story, sort of. And so then you meet all the characters, you sort of meet what they're about, and then you sort of are deciding you that the resolution point where you find out who the humbug is. And it's a hilarious holiday story with uh, great sentiments about uh, being a parent because there's Imagination March where we journey in we're trying to get out of the party and we turn into the imagination of a child just trying to find out how we got here. It's crazy. It's hilarious. And it's uh, wrapped around this sentiment of uh, who brought the humbug. And I think we can all testament, <laughs> we can all remember moments where we were at a party or a situation where we're like, who's the humbug? <laughs> you know what I mean? We got that person at the party. And 
yeah, I think it's a really fun show. It's got a beautiful message, ton of original music, a ton of artists. And because we're online this year, we had to build this massive infrastructure to stream it. And it's going to be like a live TV special where we got 12 cameras. We got uh, we had to clear with the state and the city to get our COVID plane clear. We got this uh, amazing set design team. And usually we're at a theater, so we projected to sell the same amount of tickets as we did at a theater, and we're way below that. But it's a, it's a pay per view thing, so we're thinking people will buy their tickets late. Mm-hmm. We got amazing artists. Cat Perkins, one of them. Alex Ross, Heat Box. We got Reed Grimm. We got, um, yeah, an incredible cast. I think there's 20 people in the cast. So it's really fun. It's really funny. It's really interactive because now that it's online, you can vote for who you think brought the humbug and then that's actually going to change the way the reveal is in the story which is super <laughs> funny and fun oh. and uh yeah it's a good it's a good time that celebrates connection community music dance theater and the sentiments of joy that we miss so much right now and i hope everybody gets a chance to tune in you can get your tickets at tickets.humbug.show we built our own website for it so you don't have to click around on the internet you just go to www.humbug.show or tickets.humbug.show and you can see uh, the show will take place right there on that site where you buy the tickets. So pretty and, fun stuff. And that is this Saturday, December 12th at 7.30 p.m. And here's the great deal. If you can't be watching it at 7.30 because you got something going on, the link stays live for a week. You can watch the show as many times as you want to after the live. The live is more fun because you can get the interactive element of it. But it's a great show nonetheless. And you get the link for a week so you can watch it as many times as you want. Oh, that's really cool. I was kind of wondering, like, to be honest, like, gosh, should I ask if there's a way to watch it later, too, if someone can't, or does it have to be live, or maybe I shouldn't bring it up, and (laughs) you covered it perfectly. (laughs) And it's great, too, because I think there's no, one of the rules I always at the show, every year I start the show by giving this big speech about how this is a no politics zone, and especially in this, this year, I think having something we can watch that's no politics, no commercials, no agendas, none of that kind of stuff the show to bring us together and celebrate this season and the nature of the script of the show the funny the, the, the comedy is that yeah but we're not all together because we got all different things and there's definitely a humbug here <laughs> and you'll see how that sort of the fact that we can't all be on the exact same page it's impossible for everybody to be on the same page mm-hmm. but we're trying so hard to get on the same page it becomes part of this comedic part of it because everyone's trying to politic with the other cast members to get them on their page but it's impossible to get everybody on the same page as anyone who's ever had a great family know. So it's really funny. It's really awesome. It's, it's heartfelt. And it's, uh, yeah, I think it's got a, it's got all the stuff. So now great, great time. Are you, did you record, are you recording this at the caboose? Did I read that right? Yeah, oh. we actually had to get a new venue. We, we're on our third venue. So okay. we were originally doing it at the caboose. There was technical restraints and then city restraints with trying to do it there. So we had to move and then we moved again. We got a great venue, and we're clear with the city of Burnsville. We're shooting with the rock in Burnsville. And we have, yeah, it has all the tech specs we need. It has, we've cleared with the city. We have our COVID plan in place. And, uh, yeah, we're doing it there. So, but for the, for the, <laughs> for the people watching, we could do it on the moon. It doesn't matter because they get to be at home and watch it from the comfort of their couch. Right. So it's, uh, it's my first time moving into producing a television style event and a live broadcast event. And I've learned a ton and had a great time doing it so i hope people enjoy it well so this episode will come out december 9th 2020 at 7 a.m and we'll have probably three to 6.7 million listeners right away (laughs) so assuming that they hear this uh this show again will be december 12th 2020 at 7 30 p.m and if you're listening to this and it's 3018 year 3018 I'd imagine there's technology out by now. You should probably just go back and watch it. And maybe it's still going because um, people took it over and kept it going forever. <laughs> Except way down in the Beautiful. future. <laughs> See how I'm a weird big picture guy. I'm thinking at 3018, someone's going to listen to our goofy ass podcast podcast, and then say, oh man, I wonder what that humbug stuff was about. <laughs> I wonder who brought that humble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I am excited to check it out. I wish you the best of luck. It sounds like you guys have overcome so many hurdles to get to this point, and it's absolutely amazing that it's coming true now, finally, for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, COVID's been a challenge on all of us, but I'm not going to let it change my values. So 
I value so, so, so much in the heart of my heart, um, bringing these sentiments of, of joy and connect, connection, music and dance, especially that go with the holiday season. Um, so we had to find a way to make it happen. And if it was build a website and build a tech team and do all this stuff, well, that's what we got to do because it's Christmas and I'm a huge Christmas fan. I always have been. And so, uh, we're doing it. We got to keep making the joy happen. You got to keep having the expressions of the heart. The, the, the mind matters, but the heart matters just as much. We got to keep expressing that joy. That's where I stand. Where there's a will, there's a way. And you're doing Amen. it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I am very excited for all of this as well. Um, we've been a fan of Heatbox 2 for a bit. Now we're fans of Cat Perkins, and um, now we're fans of Ricky Milan. And I would like, hey. I can't wait until hopefully someday we can meet you in person and uh, grab some Din Din. We told Cat we owe her 5,000 dinners. And uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, hopefully we can meet you in person someday and uh, do all this stuff in real life. Let's do it. So I'm excited. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Is there anything else that you want to mention to put out to the world, to the plausible millions of billions of people in the future? Yeah, keep a green room in your heart. And the world is your stage. So whatever happens out here in the world or whatever happens around you, keep that special spot in your heart and don't let anything in there. Keep it very clean. Keep it very calm. So you can go in there anytime, whatever's going on stage or in the tech booth or whatever. You can go into that green room. You can grab a deep breath. You can find a moment of gratitude and walk back out. But don't don't try to bring what's going on in that stage into that green room. So it's going to be really hard to clean. Keep that green room in you clean. So you can go in there anytime you need it. Wow, guy, yeah, you will just have a way with words. Yeah, that was beautiful. Hey, I'm just trying to help other folks that are looking for their way in the world too so <laughs> my other advice is tune in to who brought the home because it's gonna be good time so, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yes count us in we'll be there for sure not sure if we'll be able to do it live i hope we could sneak away our daughter's uh birthday party is going to be this saturday night and uh um but uh f- one way or another for sure we're going to be up on it yeah, make her watch it too because we I, there's plenty of TikTok jokes and different stuff in there for twelve year olds too because I teach twelve year olds so. Oh, good. Yeah, we, kinda, we got we got some funny jokes from all ages. Hopefully, right? oh, good. Yeah, because we're there'll be a couple extra girls running around, so maybe that'll be some a good break to eat some pizza. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Ricky, thank you very much for being a part of the now the Positively Midwest family, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in life, and you are a, a beautiful soul, and uh, we can't wait to, to meet you in person and uh, do a, a celebratory high five, if you will. Love it. I'm thankful <laughs> to be a part of this thing, and I'm thankful for Kat for connecting us, so yes, thank you guys. Definitely. Thanks, Kat Perkins. So, Kat thank Perkins. you. Thank you, Ricky. Um, thank you for taking time. Yeah, I know you've been you. super busy today as you're setting up for the show. So thank you very much. I'm thankful in every way. All right, my man. Well, we'll let you go and I will contact you in a little bit later. Uh, we'll get you a copy of this too for yourself and then we will be in touch. Um, I'd like to even do updates every so often with people and, and just touch base with them too. So, but you got our digits. Give me Love a holler it. if you got any other ideas and, and we appreciate you. Love it. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Ricky. Have a wonderful, wonderful show. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Peace. Bye. Bye. Well, Mrs. Jurens. You know, I am so grateful for this journey that you took us on with this podcast and the incredible individuals that we have had the privilege to meet. Yeah. I uh, I never would have guessed how it would evolve, but I don't even know why I'm moving this around. But it's been... uh, it almost makes me nervous in a weird way because it's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just a different feeling, um, a different kind of fulfillment. And there's times where it's not like I don't want to do this, but I'm like, I'm nervous of how it'll go or I'm nervous how it'll come across. And so I almost don't want to do it sometimes. And then we start recording and, and then it comes alive and I'm like, son of a B that's why mm-hmm. this is why we do what we do. And this is why we talk to the people we do. And, and so, you know, you always have to have your mind open to what the possibility could be, because I mean, walking into Minerva's looking for John, who knew 
that that path that day would set you in this direction with Miss Cat Perkins. I know it. And now Ricky Mylon. Yeah. And you know what? And you talk Mylan. to him. Mylon. Mylon. And I feel <laughs> like we've known him for so long already. I know it. Um, I'm really working on being a little better hugger. And so we'll have to give him a hug. Yeah. It's like welcome home. Yep. Welcome home to the Positively Midwest family. Mm-hmm. Should we close this? Absolutely. All right, folks. Here we go. <sighs> Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for listening to the Positively Midwest podcast. Our hope is to inspire, engage each other's thoughts, and leave you with some great advice. Be sure to join our Facebook group and follow us on Instagram at Positively Midwest Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, share, and screenshot our podcast with all your cool friends. Every little bit helps. We are on most all major platforms, and you can stream it on our website at PositivelyMidwest.com. Thank you, and as always, please always stay positive.